Okay, so here I have a test rig which has been manufactured to illustrate the impact of DC leakage currents on AC RCDs. With a power supply coming into an isolated transformer, that's just going to protect any other RCDs in this building from operating while I do this. It then goes through to a selector switch, which will select between the RCCB or the earth leakage sensor and shunt trip to this double pole device here. Basically, we have an RCCB here or a broken up RCCB here. And this switch just selects between one or the other. We have a DC supply, and that goes through to this switch here, which can in, uh, push through a 50 milliamp leakage into this system or a 250 milliamp leakage. Using the MFT1741 from Mega, I will set this to RCD, 30 milliamp, and we'll first of all test this RCCB here. 30 milliamp AC, so we'll test that. It trips, 7.8 milliseconds. We'll go over to the, RC, the, um, the earth leakage sensor in this shunts device here, and we test that one and it trips as expected, 31.8 milliseconds. Both of these also functionally operate as expected. So let's introduce 50 milliamp of DC leakage into the system. And we'll just play with this RCCB here for now. So having introduced 50 milliamp, we now have a no trip scenario. So this is sufficient leakage of DC nature to put this RCCB off. It still works functionally, but it's not tripping. We could chase this down to actually discover how much milliamp will be required to disconnect this by up upping the test here. So if I go to times half at 100, that's a 50 milliamp test. No trip. Okay, let's go up again. Let's go to times one, 100. So 100 milliamp test. So it's tripping on the 100 milliamp. If I now do the ramp, we'll see what we would expect to be 30 milliamp or less is now 60 milliamps. So that's a huge difference. It requires six amounts of leakage current for this 30 milliamp device to operate purely because of 50 milliamp of DC leakage into the system. Let's go up to 250. First thing to note now is at 250, it's so saturated that even the functional test isn't going to work. So the times one's not going to work. Neither is the times half or the times one at 100. So let's go with 300 times half, which is 150. Still doesn't trip. Let's step that up to times one, which is 300. Now it trips at 7.9. Okay, so 300 milliamp times one. If we do the round test on that, so this 30 milliamp device is now requiring to trip 195 milliamps, that's well off. This is making this device pretty much unusable. When we have leakage of DC nature coming into the system, we've done this in the previous video, it can really offset by saturating the ACRCD. ACRCDs can become a very, very unfavorable device Many parts of Europe and around the rest of the world, standards just don't allow them, or they have them in very, very, very specialized scenarios. Some standards we have in the UK don't allow them either. If you're designing systems today and you're thinking about ensuring the life of the installation for your customers, think about specifying type ARCDs minimum to future-proof your designs against the effects of DC leakage, which could be coming from Electric vehicles, solar panels, could be coming from appliances in the home, lighting LED drivers, all these things can kick ACRCDs out of action.